Welcome to today's episode of Hauling Humans, and today I wanted to review and discuss a new book on the market, Sirens, Lights, and Lawyers by David Giveaux. And forgive me, David, if I mispronounce your name. I did some research, and that was the best I could do. I came up with about three pronunciations, so I chose the one that I liked the best. So I'm going to talk about the introduction of this book, and David goes through his background. He's a West Coast paramedic. I'm an East Coast paramedic. So I found this fascinating because we grew up at about the same time. He's got a few years on me, but not many. And he writes really well. He does it very conversationally, and I highly recommend this book. Once I get into the meat of it and learn about the legal aspects, I'm sure I'm going to like it even more. Because he's built his career as a lawyer and defending EMS providers. So he has taken his foundation and he built a wonderful house around the legal system and he's sharing the insides of the legal system with us. I give a medical legal lecture at the beginning of every semester. I'm going to read this entire book before the semester starts in the fall so I can make it even better. So thank you, David, for publishing this. It came out only July 5th of this year. And let's just go through the introduction. It's a long introduction. It's about 30 pages. But you learn a lot about what it's like to be a West Coast EMS provider in the 90s and 2000s. And you learn a lot about David, which really sets the stage well. So good job on that. He goes all the way from him being in high school, which I guess in, ha in California you do a lot of Hollywood antics in high school. He got detained after sneaking on the set of The Karate Kid. He met John Hughes because they filmed a portion of Ferris Bueller's Day Off in his high school. I can tell you none of that happened on the East Coast. Not one bit. He worked as a production assistant and an intern on a movie. So he had Hollywood all around him, and I suppose that's normal for California. So that's pretty fascinating. In the beginning of the chapter, David talks about how this is only interesting to him by putting it in parentheses, and I would disagree. It's great to see what the EMS systems are like around the world in different places. And David does a great job of framing that for us as the reader. And he also, I was fascinated by the similarities. So David found himself in EMS because he wanted to get through college as quick as possible. So he looked for the course with the most credits that, that he could get through. And he was a lifeguard and he saw EMT and it was five credits and he's like wow this is good I can sit through this and it ended up framing his entire life which I find fascinating and I take very seriously as a university professor who teaches EMTs I can remember my first EMT instructor my first EMT class very vividly and I think everyone does so the impressions that we make on our students are very, very important. So just as an educational sideline, I just want you to keep that in mind if you're teaching EMTs. The experience you give them will change and frame possibly their entire life. So he talks about his EMT class, and I think that's great. He talks about his ride-alongs, which is a really good step back in time. And then he talks about his first year working. And the two major lessons he learned in EMS in his first year, one is that it's nothing like TV or the movies. And, and the providers remain very measured and calm, to quote him. Everyone knows their moves and does the dance. And I think this is very profoundly written and well done, and that's so true. And as you go into EMS, the best crews are completely quiet and amazing things are occurring. Now, his second big lesson was harder for him to comprehend, and this is something I want to talk about. He ran a cardiac arrest, and it was asystole, meaning a flat line. There was very little chance of the person living. And back then, it was 1988, uh, we all experienced this in EMS. They went through the, the motions. They did CPR the whole time. The crew, the paramedic, the firefighter, they're laughing, they're joking. They're not really taking it seriously, and that was hard. He didn't understand why. He asked his partner about it, and the feedback was, the guy was dead before we got there. You know, they're just going through the motions. And the saddest and one of the most important lessons David says he learned is that pragmatism over emotion 
is how providers stay sane and quality patient care is done. Now that's fascinating. I would agree with you that that is how we did it in the 90s and 80s, but I want to propose something different for the future, and that for the future, I would like EMS providers to understand that understanding that you are human and embracing your emotions is how we're going to get it done and fully survive a career and processing the emotions that we feel. Because obviously this was a very impactful moment for David, an impactful moment for everyone because he remembers it so vividly. So that is, that is great that he talks about that. And then he goes on, and one of the best quotes that's this sums up his first lesson is that he learned from Ernie, Ernie Rodriguez, run the call, don't run to the call. And I highlighted that, and that stands strong today, and I'm stealing that one from you to quote that in my classroom. I haven't heard that on the East Coast. And then he went through um, a paramedic internship or a paramedic school that was very classic 80s, early 90s. And he talks about that 80% from day to day was what they had to score on these daily quizzes. And it wasn't unusual to see fewer faces every day. So literally, to learn how to be a paramedic back then, and that was a similarity, East Coast, West Coast, was like, I say like Navy SEAL school. They, they literally tried to make you ring the bell every day and tried to break you. And this is horrible education, in my opinion. I understand education very well. And today, we've gotten rid of that, and I think for the better, because we create EMTs and paramedics today. We don't weed through the people that we think should not do it. So that was, that was interesting to see the similarities. And all the instructors, he said, were committed to excellence. And he had different types of instructors. And every instructor he described, I can see faces of people that I have been exposed to. And David did a good job of being very positive and talking about all the positive aspects of everybody he met. And he did not talk about any of the negative aspects. So I applaud you for that. A thought on that, though, is I want everyone to understand that you can learn as much from a bad instructor and a bad EMS provider as you can from the most amazing instructor or EMS provider you will ever meet. But you need to put them into categories. Today, I realize I am with someone who should not be doing this job or should not be teaching me, and I'm going to learn what not to do. And tomorrow, hopefully, you're with a better provider and you can learn what to do. So learn what not to do and learn what to do and make that as positive as you can throughout your career. So he talks about that, and I think that is amazing. Um, and he goes through his entire career in EMS and what he learned as a paramedic. He became a paramedic. He talks about the people he worked with and every name, and I can't remember all the names he brought up, and he says in one point of the chapter, these are people are important to me, but not you. They're important to me too, David, because I think that you described everyone I worked with as well, except my people had different names. And I think that you did a great job talking about quality matters and complacency kills. He makes that point throughout the book, the, the introduction to this. And he talks about how what he learned as a paramedic framed his career and the way he looked at life as a lawyer. And I think that you set this book up very well. And I'm going to give this book five out of five stars so far. And I'm going to keep reading. And I may give you some reviews as we go along throughout the different chapters. But I highly recommend Sirens, Lights, and Lawyers. It just came out. And it is a good read. It's, a, it's an enjoyable read. I enjoyed the introduction very much. And I highly recommend it. That's all for hauling humans today. And remember, always try to be nice, but never, ever fail to be kind.